Welcome everyone. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible. And here today to help me with that mission is one of the most amazing author experts of a new book that we have coming out called Love Warriors, The Conscious Expert's Guide to Healing, Joy, and Manifestation. Abby Martin, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I am so excited to have this conversation today. You guys, Abby Martin is a master Wiccan and energy healer at Intuitive Resources, where she provides spiritual tools to help people find their magic. And listen, this Love Warriors theme, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. It's just so juicy. It feels like the energy has been so incredibly big for this book. Like if you all are attracted to that title, Love Warriors, you're about to hear why, even if you didn't know why you were so attracted to it, right? So Abby, thank you so much for being willing to share your story in this book and for really the incredible master teachings you're dropping there too. This book is full of these awareness practices like yours that are going to transform people's lives. Um, Tell us a little bit about the chapter that you wrote. Absolutely. And, and part of why I wanted to be a part of this was the title. As <laughs> soon as you said Love Warriors, I was, I was all in because that's been um, part of, I think, my journey is becoming a spiritual warrior, which is all for love. Um, so I wanted to take the perspective of my journey that started off in so much fear. You know, like when everything's coming at you and getting to that point isn't just a snap of the finger, right? It's a process, it's a journey, it's a learning. And that's, but that's the goal, right? We want to be at that place where nothing gets to us with, with all of the craziness we have happening in the world. Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> I appreciate you saying that it started in those fears like, I want to help people understand the feeling of that so that they can pause in the moment and shift it. I know it's not like in, an instant thing. It's a practice. But can you talk more about that place when you're feeling that fear? And then what, do you, what did you do? What happened? Yeah. Well, I th there's two pieces to that. I think first is the recognition and starting to become aware of all the places that fear comes in. You know, as I look at just how to advertise, right? As I'm trying to build my business, everybody's like, get them with the hook of fear. Get them. I mean, like it is just, we're ingrained with, let me get something that scares you. Let me do that. Then we have, you know, you know so it's like just coming into that moment, not changing anything, but going, oh, look at that. That's, that's something that's fear-based. Oh, like, and so, so then you can start making different decisions. But for me, it was that awareness piece of, oh, wow. Like I had, I had, uh, it's embarrassing to admit now. I mean, I just had no idea how much fear was coming at me from my family. Right. Like, you, you know, like, my grandmother, I mean, different generation, but it was like, you know, once that it was dark, you needed to be in the house, doors needed to be locked, you, you know, and it was like always like, oh, what, what do you mean you're going to be out, you know, so, so it's just that constant coming at you. And so once I started to want to make a shift, I kept going, I don't like how I feel like this is this isn't who I want to be. And, and so I had to stop first and take stock and then start making little changes. I feel like you're, I rambled. <laughs> no, you're giving me such a, a little moment, a little aha about, I think we've lived our entire lives, not only from the generational fear that came before us, yeah. our, our own parents, teachers, mentors were full of it. So we got it. And, and duh, why do I think, you know, it's any surprise that we're, we're dealing with this, <laughs> like, right. Uh, but, but waking up to all of this and, and chatting about the topic. I mean, even just listening to you just now, I hope our listeners are like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> like I've had it coming at me from all different angles. No wonder I feel like that all the time. What, what maybe is a better way to live? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just to. Like, I think if anybody takes one nugget, it's 
It's just having an awareness, even if you don't change anything, that can help you start to shift. At least that was my my place because I went, this was just this summer, you know, this is many years, you, you know, and I'm in the pool relaxing, enjoying, and somebody's like, what do you mean you don't watch the news and you don't know what's happening? You need to know that. And I'm like, whoa, like, <laughs> it's just, we are constantly barraged with it um, by well-meaning people. I mean, I don't think any of, any of our ancestors, anybody did any of it on purpose, like, oh, let me create this fear-based place. This is just the experience that we're having. And so, we need to wake up from it and we need to, you know, step into this, this love warrior mentality a little bit, man, don't get me started on not watching the news. So I'm one of those crazy aliens as well. I don't have cable. I don't watch the news. I choose not to turn it on with awareness. You get the choice. And that's actually what was giving me the aha when you were talking about it was like, man, the entire way we see the world if we are tv watchers or if we have been our whole lives is it's fear-based like uh, it feels so heavy to me it does and then when you stop you are it's then you don't you don't feel like you belong which i think is really tough for people because you don't have the things in commonality, which is what started that conversation because they were talking about all these things. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it was like, what? So <laughs> I think that it, it is, it, it takes a certain fortitude, right? To say, I don't know, and I'm okay not knowing. I haven't watched the news now in probably 18 years mm-hmm. and I'm really not that sad about it. <laughs> yeah, me either. So, no, thank yeah. you. Right. Um, awesome. It's awesome to talk to another uh, fellow uh, uh, anti-news <laughs> person. <laughs> I, listen, I live an amazing life. I have joy in it every single day. I actually think that's one of the reasons is yeah. because I decided not to put yeah. that in my life every day. Yeah. Um, whew, okay. So <laughs> when I created this idea of love warriors, I wanted that part of that definition to be about showing up, knowing that our vulnerability is one of our strengths. It, that's part of it for me. Yeah. That was one way I defined being a love warrior. So <laughs> what does being a love warrior mean to you in addition to what you've already talked about? Sure, sure. Yeah, the the word, and I can't remember where I got it from, but it has stuck with me, is being unflappable right? That's to me what a love warrior is. It's this person when you have all of this stuff coming at you, which we just always will. I don't think that it's a reasonable statement to, to be, you know, cause I, I think I even put it in my chapter and I, it's, I just, the love and light brigade did us no favors, you know, of like everything is positive. That's, that's not a true statement, but it's when something scary happens, when something bad happens going, okay, I'm really scared. Like you can own it, be aware of it. We're not, not going to be afraid, excuse me. But then after you have your moment, (laughs) stepping into your spiritual power, right? Like making those decisions from that place versus the place of being really scared. So that, that to me is what a love warrior does is, you know, facing the fear, getting through it faster, and then making decisions from that empowered divine place. Yes. Brilliant. I love listening to you talk about that. All of our authors have these beautiful, unique ways of sharing what that means to them. And that's part of the mission of the book really is to include all of those voices and ways to talk Mm -hmm. about it. Um, I love that in particularly, because I think, you know, it's not about shoving the fear or the pain or whatever it is we're going through. You have to face it to move through it. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. So aside from writing this beautiful chapter for the book, I know that you have a lot going on. Tell us what else you're up to in the world. Thank you. Um, so one of the things that I'm really working to bring into the world, this has been part of my, you know, love warrior mission here is to teach people, um, a ritual, teach people a new process. I call it spiritual alchemy, where I've taken a blend of prayer ritual and witchcraft and law of attraction. And then I take crystals and essential oils and mantras, and I've blended it into this one practice that I call an alchemy kit. And so I'm really working to launch and bring that into the world right now of teaching people. I have set ones, you know, like kind of some of our bigger 
issues in life, maybe your health, maybe you're looking for a job or love, um, you know, those types of things. And then I create custom ones for people. So I'm really working right now on pushing that out and helping to share that with the world and teach people this new, I would say modality that's just a combination, you know, of all the things we've been learning over the years. Oh my gosh, I've been talking about this with every person that we're interviewing on this series, but this is this gets me so excited, you guys. I'm talking to the listeners now too. Like these authors who have stepped up to write for Love Warriors, they they are trailblazing, first of all, what it even means to be a love warrior, but they were the ones that said, Yeah, I'm gonna commit myself to this life, this journey, this learning and understanding my own path so that I can help you understand yours, the alchemy kit, you guys. So, you know, Abby has dedicated her life to understanding that and bringing in all of these powerful modalities to create her own unique thing, right? And so maybe this is the thing you've been waiting for, you guys. Maybe this is the unique blend and combination. So if you're out there and you've been feeling a loss of hope a little bit, you've tried 15 things and they're not working or they've been temporary. I'm telling you that some of our experts are going to have that step for you. And Abby might be one of them. So, you know, take a little exploration of her website. It's down below for you and, and read about what she's doing because um, this is powerful stuff, life-changing stuff. So one of the biggest missions I have with every Brave Healer Productions book is to help you, the readers, live extraordinary lives. No matter where you are on your journey, these books are going to help you answer the question, what else is possible? So Abby, what's one simple stepping stone you'd like to share with our listeners today that are, that's going to help them on their journey today? What, what do you want them to know? Um, as soon as you said that, so part of my thing in life is creating ritual, creating something sacred and unique out of every experience. And so if there's nothing else you do, you know, something so simple, right? I give a ritual in the chapter, but if you can just go like, I'm really scared like, and just commit to saying, I will take five minutes to pause and just sit with that fear. Just sit with it for a second. Let me see where it's coming from. Let me, instead of taking action from it, just sitting with it. That would be like the one thing, like if we could all just sit and do that for a second, I think a lot of um, decisions would be different. (laughs) That's a really, (laughs) really powerful tip that you just gave. And we're jumping ahead very quickly to like that action or that other next step when we forgot, we just need to pause and breathe with it a little bit. Um, And we'll all do it. I don't care if you've been doing this work for 50 years, you know, something happens and it's like, whoa, (laughs) pause. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super powerful and awesome. Um, Abby, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with us. Thank you. And thank you for having us and hosting this and bringing this together. It's, it's really powerful stuff. My total pleasure. Um, all right, you guys. So if something you heard today from Abby made you curious, you have a question, you need some support, scroll on down and you're going to be able to connect with her on her website. Um, she's very generously there for you to help you take those next steps. Check out all of the amazing things that she's up to. And one of the other missions of the book is to give you the experts and the community that you need for healing and joy and manifesting that amazing life of yours. So you're invited to our self-healing book club group on Facebook. You can continue these conversations there with our authors. All right. I've got you hooked up down below with that. And you're invited to our live stream book launch party for love warriors. It's going to be January 6th in the new year, 23. It'll be on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. I've got you with the link down below as well. I'm going to be chatting with all of our co-authors of the love warriors book who are going to be there to share their wisdom and inspiration with you. And if you're listening around that date, you can hop to Amazon because the book will be ready and ready for your purchase and your journey. And lastly today, everyone, remember, 
your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So if you're ready to become one of our next Brave Healer Productions bestselling authors, it is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone.